This lesson is on if statements. We use if statements a lot um, for different things, but mostly it's to identify special cases um, when you have large amounts of data. Sometimes it's hard to see what it is that stands out from the rest. So we develop these formulas um, that might send up a red flag, so to speak, to let us know when a cer certain situation has occurred, whether uh, sales exceeded a such an amount or are lower than such an amount, whether a bank account goes below a certain amount, whether somebody hasn't paid us in a long time. Uh, the uses for if statements are, are unlimited, really. So I'm going to give us some examples here. Um, we've got some employees, and we're going to look for employees who, who just aren't producing a, a lot. So we're going to say any employee who's producing less than 200 uh, in any given week, we want to know about them. So an if statement initially is quite, it's tough to understand, but once you've done, it's like anything else, once you've done a few of them, they're really not that difficult. They start with equal if and the open bracket. That's, that's how you start it. The next part is, this is the condition. So I'll give you an example. If Johnny's good, then allowance, otherwise grounded. So we're going to do the Johnny is good part. So if so certain thing is happening, then we'll de determine what happens afterwards. So here we're going to say if this number is greater than 200. Okay, so that's condition. If production is greater than 200, we could have said less than 200, right? We could have gone the other way. Then is simply a comma. So if it's less than 200, then I want a certain word coming up. So here I can say um, uh, not good, let's say, or poor even. And then I'm going to close the quote. Then I'm going to put another comma, which means otherwise. So if this is true, then I want the word poor to come up. Otherwise, I can say the word good, or to make it simple, I can put absolutely nothing. So I just opened my quote, closed my quote. So this way, only the poor people will come up. And now I would copy this formula down the way I would anything else. Because if I copy it down, B3 is going to turn into B4 to B5 to B6. And that's exactly what I want. So here, I set it up so that if the production was under 200, the word poor would come up, was greater than 100. Sorry, so I did this backwards. I should have did this so that the word poor would have come up here. Once again, there's a lesson on always check to make sure your formulas work properly. So now only the people who are not over 200 are getting the word poor and the others are getting absolutely nothing. So that's one thing that you can do with your if statements, have a certain word come up. But you can also set it up so that it does some math for you as well. So again, the start is equal if, that's if, and open your bracket, and now we put the condition. We're gonna do the same condition, okay? So if uh, this number is greater than 200, then, so now I'm going to give, us, give them a bonus to their pay. So now I can take their production. So I can say B3 once again. Take B3 and multiply it by, let's say, um, let's say we give them another dollar for each piece of production that they do. So times one. Otherwise, I can give them actually uh, no bonus at all and then close it. So again, you're, if B3 is greater than, then I want them to have whatever they produce times one. Otherwise, I want them to have absolutely nothing. So here, this person got another extra $206, whereas the other people got absolutely nothing. And then you could set up another net pay situation where they get more money on top of what they would have otherwise earned. So those are if statements. They're very useful, they're very handy, tough initially, but after you've done a few, they're not bad.